almost exactly 20 years ago, I graduated uh, from my business school. And uh, now there was a very distinguished speaker who came and spoke in front of the audience of 191 of us who were graduating. 192 of us were graduating at that time from the business school. And I think he spoke quite eloquently. Now, 20 years later, if you ask me what he said, I have a zero recollection of anything he said. Okay. So I know uh, the lasting value of whatever I say in the next few minutes. I have no illusions about the lasting value of what I'm going to say in the next few minutes. Um, so take that with that grain of salt. Now, I started my career 20 years ago and um, over the last 20 years became an entrepreneur, built a business and uh, reached a certain place in my life at this point of time. And I thought what I could share with you should be a function of my experiences. I'm nobody to give you worldly advice because I think you're probably getting a lot of that in any case from a lot of different sources. So I think maybe I can use some of my experiences to better inform maybe share those stories with you and maybe some of them might help you in your uh, in your journey my first job involved uh, working for a boss who was very difficult to work with uh, and i know some of you already have a lot of experience uh, having uh, worked in organizations before coming to workplace and now going back to your some of, of your workplaces so you have some experience of what i'm talking about but i'm also told that half the class here is uh, our freshers. Uh, so you're going to experience the first job. And first job is usually quite a shock relative to your expectations of what you want to find in a workplace. And it is, uh, my first job involved very difficult work where my boss was essentially, I, was, I joined an investment bank and, uh, and my, uh, that was 1998. And 1998, as you might probably know, uh, was a was a tough year for investment banks. Those days uh, there was the LTCM crisis, uh, which meant that a uh, lot of banks around the world had made a lot of lo a lot of losses. Uh, they have over leveraged, and the bank that I joined had a similar crisis because of which uh, they were suddenly cutting back. Uh, they had lost a lot of money in Russia. They had a lot of uh, lost a lot of money, uh, like other investment banks, and they decided that they were not going to do many deals. So they, they decided to cut their exposures. And so there were no deals. I joined the organization and I was sitting there and thinking, how, what am I going to learn? I want some action. You know, I'm, I'm this fancy MBA from a fancy business school and I want some action right away. And my boss told me, why don't you read all the deal documents? So my, bo my boss told me, there are all these deals that we have done in, in the mid 90s and late 90s. Why don't you guys, why don't you read all these documents and figure out what is going on in the euro currency syndicated loan market, which is what, which is what I was trying to do. Structured debt, structured finance. I was trying to raise structured debt for a lot of Indian corporates around the world. And I was, this is the most boring job ever because I have to read these fat documents and trying to make sense of uh, those fat documents and understand how deals are done. And I used to literally sleep uh, in the first few months uh, in the office and a couple of times, my boss caught me and said, what's going on? Why? And I was like, I, had, I was expecting so much more from a first job than I actually was getting. But here's what, what happened. Once I, I started looking at those documents because I had no choice. And then soon after, a, few, a couple of months later, there actually were some deals to be done. And I remember that when, when that situation came through, that... A uh, few months of grounding and few months of reading those documents, boring as they were, was re really, really useful in doing the deals later on. The reason I'm getting to this is that all of us experience some degree of uh, shock or, uh, or uh, surprise when we actually first join our first workplace. It's different from how we imagined it, how we saw in the movies. Uh, but there's, there's a lot to learn. And... <coughs> And you have to make up your mind quickly enough whether this is the right place for me or not. And for that, I have a, a three-point formula for you. Okay, see if you if it makes sense for you. Uh, one is that whatever you do has to be pleasurable to you. Right? What does it mean? That means that you have to feel like coming to work every day. It's a condition you have, you have to place in work because you're going to spend between eight to ten hours, a third to half of your life uh, in workplaces. And there's no point in doing something that 
if that doesn't add value to you that doesn't uh, isn't pleasurable you feel you have to feel like coming to work every day if you're looking forward to only the weekends that's not work okay that's the first thing it has to have pleasure the second uh, part of that is meaning what is, what do i mean by meaning it, it it's your ability to see the bigger picture why am i doing what am i doing how am i adding value to somebody somewhere in the world now it is not about inherently some task is meaningful and some task is not meaningful tasks are general it's about our ability to find meaning in them i'll give you an example of peter drucker one of the most leading management thinkers of the 20th century and still his management wisdom is latest wisdom even back in even in middle of 21st century he says if you find stone cutters everywhere in the world you'll find three categories of stone cutters the first category if you ask them they'll say i'm cutting stones you know i'm making a living that's it they are there just for the paycheck they are going home every weekend they're looking forward to the weekend but they are essentially there because it pays money that's what you'll call a job okay the second category of stone cutters if you ask them they'll say look i am doing a great job of cutting stones i'm one of the best in the industry in cutting stones okay these guys are are investing a lot right they're working the weekends maybe they're working very hard but their idea is to become the best stone cutters in the world right that's the second category of stone cutters there for them it's a career right and the third category of stone cutters are the are the ones who say look i'm here to build a cathedral i'm here to build something the institution these guys are actually seeing the larger purpose of why they are here okay they have a calling right so that's so when you the, the cutting with stones is exactly the same job between the three of them the ones who are finding meaning in that are the ones who are going to start who are going to excel who is going to actually who are actually going to last a long time in that profession most of you are going to be uh, in the data science profession and i know thing or two about that profession um and exactly the same thing applies here don't look at the activity of what you are doing but think of the larger purpose of the problem that you are trying to solve how you going to make an impact how you going to change somebody's life how you going to touch somebody's life i think there is that always happening as long as you are able to look victor henkel uh, victor uh, frankel who uh, who was in the german concentration camp uh, and uh, wrote a very very meaningful book called um, uh, meaningful book of meaning of life um, so man search for meaning that that's the book right please do feel free to read it it's a it's a very very good book he talks about how he survived the german concentration camps for many years because of him his ability to find meaning in the really really tough conditions of the concentration camp he could see that he thought this was there was a purpose behind the suffering that he had and that's the reason why he could actually last through the concentration camp come out and write successful book become a successful doctor he was very successful because of being able to find meaning in the toughest situations so second for second part of the recipe is really meaning the third part is about finding your strength finding that zone where work really flies time really flies by if you're doing an activity and you feel like oh did i spend 6 hours doing just that and you didn't have an understanding of how much time went by that means you are in a place where you are you are beginning to find the zone which is called flow the the, the psychologist mihai chiksen mihai calls that uh, zone as flow zone essentially these are activities which are neither too hard not too easy they're just hard enough that it's stretching you but it's not so hard that it's creating anxiety that's the zone where you find your strength right when you're doing things and you find that zone of strength you know that that's zone of flow i think that's a, that's an area of your strength now if you find work which at the intersection of pleasure meaning and strength or pleasure meaning and flow that's really the spot where i think great careers are made a uh, great uh, calling uh, you can find your calling so um i i did not find my calling in my first job uh, but i did uh, after having started fractal uh, about 20 years ago that's the first first thing i want to tell you second thing i want to tell you is that especially in the world of data science right we are we are beginning to create uh, the future of what work should look like in the middle of 21st century work will be very different 20 years from now work is going to be very different than the work that we are doing right now many today we do a lot of different kinds of work i see these uh, high rise buildings where people are cleaning windows 
right? and you know very dangerously poisoned 20th floor and 25th first floor there uh, there are these sort of uh, little things and they are trying to clean the windows highly dangerous professions some of these professions are will be automated they will not be there but work in general will be different from the way we have conceptualized it this year the, 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 right now right? 100 years ago farming used to be a very large part of work everywhere in the united states today it is 2% of work right if you ask that time what would work look like 100 years from then people wouldn't be able to tell similarly 100 years from now we or even 20 years from now we don't know what the work will look like and how do you prepare for that workplace right? most of us all of us will have a 40 year career ahead of us 40 years right and what work will be very different even 20 years from now even 10 years from now it's going to be very different 20 years back there were no cell phones mostly there were no cell phones in india like just beginning there was very little of internet i got my first email address in 1997 so 20 years ago there were no email it's hardly it's it's really difficult to imagine how the world was 20 years ago from the lenses of someone like my 7 year old daughter she she just is not able to imagine how where I, the conditions in which i grew up and it's going to be very similar changes will happen in the next 20 years if you have to be ready for that work that world one of the most important things to do is to keep learning because we don't know what will be the new stuff that will be fancy at that point of time there was no data science 20 years ago it was very i mean that term didn't exist there was there was mathematics and there was mathematics to make better decision making but it wasn't called data science so 20 years from now what that world will be is very different but if you are building a 40 year career you have to be relevant 20 years from now and one of that elements is to keep learning and to learn the ability to learn right how what are the ways in which you can learn any new subject a new subject comes up cyber security for example it's a fancy new topic okay do you want to if you have to learn that quickly enough do you have the capacity to learn that and what are the ways in which you can get better at that i think that would be my advice is for a 40 year career manage the first 20 years in such a way that you're relevant at the end of 20 years in in our for example in our it industry and some of you may be from that industry uh, i think 30 to 40 percent of that industry has become completely redundant in the last five years because everybody started becoming better you know better and better at just managing people right they grew to some extent and they became people managers and they started measuring themselves on the ability to manage more and more people right and suddenly when people management is no longer as critical and central uh, and new skills are required uh, they found themselves to be redundant and and some of them are now struggling at this point in time similar things will happen in our industry i think you've got to stay grounded close to the action and learn new things as they are coming along one of those things is coding right? some of us are very uh, familiar with coding and some of us uh, don't like coding especially when i graduated from uh, ima um, and 20 years ago i had this very interesting interview by nachiket mor who was uh, who was uh, head of treasury of icsci bank icsci limited at that time and he asked me i had just graduated had done my four years of engineering and then two years of mba and uh, so i was i was a fancy mba who decided that okay coding is not for mbas you know coding is for engineers i'm not the guy who's going to code that's how i thought and he asked me to write a few lines of c code something to do with pointers and stuff like that and i knew that you know this is something i understand i can do it but because i had not done it for two years i i was finding a little hard to get the right answer uh secondly i was feeling like okay this is not this is beneath me this is not for me and i decided to uh, tell the chicken you know you know what you know you know i graduated from iit what do you think i mean i can solve this problem don't worry about that i won't but i refused to write that piece of code in that interview you know what happened next i was in shortlisted i didn't make it uh to that job and when i think about that even 20 years later that i feel like it was quite idiotic of me to have uh done that because i defined myself as okay this is not me this is below my my capability and that was wrong so i think jeffrey hinton who is one of the leading lights in the data science world right now and recently received the turing prize uh he is 70 71 i think okay and he still quotes and he i, I saw I watched an interview of his recently where he talks about the value of coding uh, even at this age of 72 or 71 or 72 
so my advice to you is don't stop coding you might feel like i'm becoming a better people manager so i don't have to stay true or stay current with the stuff that's going on i think that would be a wrong 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 decision you have to stay close to the action close to where uh, things are happening and close to where you can add value and coding i think is critical to being in the data science world so uh, so on that topic of the future of work right what do you have to learn certainly uh, coding learning to learn uh, but also there are deeply human capabilities uh, which i think will will stay relevant all the time machines might come and take many of our jobs and machines might take a larger percentage of the work that we do but do not forget uh, that there are a whole host of skills that are completely very very human our ability to empathize understand other human beings our ability to uh, solve problems our ability to imagine new things that don't exist these are things that are very very far from machines right now i think if you are if you stay in that realm i think you'll be very relevant while still being a great coder right so that's my second advice is prepare yourself for the future of work prepare yourself for the next 40 years of a career and invest in those things that will be relevant 20 years from now because 20 years from now you still are in the workforce and you you have to be relevant okay my last piece of advice uh, is about ethical leadership okay uh, i grew up um, thinking i'm never going to be an entrepreneur uh, i had my fa- my father used to uh, tell me that business businessmen are always corrupt there's no such thing as an honest businessman that's an oxymoron that's that's that was my upbringing uh and uh, and as i grew up i realized that okay this this is you know what i'm going to go and do a job uh and never going to be an entrepreneur because you know you need capital to make make more capital number one number two is you know i don't want to get into this you know ethical dilemmas every day of being in uh, being an entrepreneur then i met in 1997 i met narayan murthy uh in because he came to teach a course on business ethics and uh, he was very influential he, Infosys was not a very big company back then it was it had just gone public in 1995 uh, so narayan murthy was not such a big deal and um, when i spoke with, when i met with him and i listened to him i realized that uh, you know it's possible to actually build an ethical business there is at least one example one good example one great example and since then i found a few more great examples uh, in in india but over the last couple of years again i see that you know it's it's not really changed a lot but this generation i think we need to change that we need to change the way india is run ethically uh, and there's a lot of that going on in the next 20 years if you can run if you can stay ethical true to your ethics true to the ethics that you've been brought up with uh, and also push the organizations that you work for or uh, the organizations that you set up i think that would be great because india really needs leaders like the people in this room are capable of right Uh, we have a lot going on in india india is uh, in the next 20 to 30 years we can reclaim our position as the leader of the of, of the free world we were those intellectual and uh, intellectual leaders of the free world back in the 1800s we were the richest one of the richest nations in the world and we lost that over the last 100 years i think we can reclaim that but that won't happen without ethical strong ethical leadership so my advice to you is uh, there it is possible it can be done uh, it has been done by infosys it has, it is been, it is something that i am attempting to do and i and i welcome all of you to come and try that and build the uh, ethical backbone of the country of the next 20 years thank you